Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and if you're stopping by this video, something tells me you might have a leak under your sink. One of the main components that can cause such a leak is right here and that is your strainer. Over the years, this can loosen up uh, and can be a source of leaking into your sink base and then eventually damaging your sink base. So this video is gonna show you and walk you through step by step on how to swap out to a new strainer. And also, very realistic scenario, these components are on for years and years. So they have a lot of mineral deposits built up and a lot of the different uh, slip nuts and lock nuts that you need to take off can be really bound up and much harder to, to take off than you would expect or what you might see in some other videos. So I'm gonna show you how just some basic vinegar that you'd have around your kitchen how this was key, a key part to being able to loosen up these nuts and make this job much easier. So let's jump in and show you what tools you're gonna to need. You'll at least need needle nose pliers, large channel locks, and plumber's putty. I also recommend an old towel or some shop towels and a bucket to put under the sink. Additionally, I'm showing two specialty wrenches that are made for sink and faucet installation. Look down in the description, I'll have a link to those exact tools if you're interested. Taking needle nose pliers or the rigid sink tool, you'll secure the top of the strainer before jumping under the cabinet. Once you have it secured, take your large channel locks in this design of strainer. There's two other types of strainer designs. But independent of the strainer design, what we're gonna do is start off by taking off this tail piece so we're able to work with the strainer and disconnect it from the P-trap. Now this piece can be kind of gummed up. So there can be mineral deposits from the years and years of this being on, which makes it pretty tough to actually remove from the strainer itself. Giving you a little closer look, you can really see here where the threads and the slip nut are kind of fused together with those mineral deposits. So the question is, how do we loosen this up? Method one, which I have had work in the past, is using a heat gun and slowly heat up the slip nut and the strainer itself, which hopefully will weaken the bond of the mineral deposits. Now, once you have it warm, obviously don't touch it, right? It's gonna be pretty hot, but you can secure the top and get your channel locks and see if it works. In this case, it doesn't. Turning to method two, and that is just using the basic vinegar. And I put it in a spray bottle. You don't have to put it in a spray bottle, but what I'm trying to do is get the vinegar around all the threads and then really get it setting in the lip of the, the slip nut. So then I'll have some standing vinegar there at the top of the slip nut and working its way and eating down through the mineral deposits. So I will leave that here now for five to 10 minutes to see if this can help work loose those mineral deposits. So let's give it a go. Remember, you still need to secure the top with needle nose pliers or the rigid sink tool and then use your channel locks on the slip nut to see if the vinegar helped out. And bingo, it did. So loosen the slip nut and now you're good to go. Okay, so now removing the lock nut so we can, can remove the old hardware. This one's pretty easy, a lot easier than the slip nut. So once that lock nut's off, you can take the mounting cup off the bottom and also the old rubber seal. And then once that's removed, then the strainer body itself will be easy to just pop up through the sink. With those components out, you wanna also make sure you clean off all the old plumber's putty or somebody use silicone or whatever they use, you wanna get down to a nice clean metal surface before you start to apply your new plumber's putty because you're gonna want that to have a nice surface to seal against. All right, jumping in, so we have our new strainer. So I'll show you the components to this. Okay, so we have the slip nut here, our favorite slip nut, and a new washer on the inside. 
and then we'll take this nut off which these will all come up through the bottom and then when you take everything off this is actually going to go setting down through the sink with some plumber's putty on the bottom and then we have a rubber washer and a fiber looks like a paper washer uh, d this is supposed to be used do not dispose of that uh, and then that's go going to go this first down through plumber's putty then you have the sink you'll come up down up from the bottom put this on and then we'll go ahead and tighten it like that pretty straightforward so first get some plumber's putty this should be enough for what we need. You can kind of roll that out. Some people apply it to the strainer. That's what I'm gonna to prefer to do. And some put it on the sink. I think it's kind of up to you. Now we'll take the excess off. And you just want to make sure you have a just a, a nice healthy bead all the way around extra is no problem we'll take that off later on so now insert the strainer through the top and press down to push the plumber's putty out around all the different sides then go under and remove the excess plumber's putty that has come through and we'll start assembling the strainer so first the rubber washer, then the fiber washer, then the mounting cup, and last the lock nut. Hand tighten the lock nut, then once you get it snug, you will secure the top again with needle nose pliers or the rigid tool and tighten with your channel locks. And you'll see the plumber's putty will start coming out from around the strainer while you're tightening this. Then you'll go up top, and you'll want to see a nice consistent bead all the way around. You do not want to see any dry parts because then that could mean you might have a future leak where the plumber's putty is not all the way around. So now just remove the extra plumber's putty and your strainer is secure. So last step before testing, we'll install the new washer and slip nut into the tailpiece and then we'll remount it to the bottom of the strainer. In addition to tightening the slip nut, do not forget to tighten all the other nuts here on the P-trap, which you have loosened up or might have loosened up just throughout the project. Secure the top and then use your channel locks to tighten that slip nut. Arguably the most important part of this project is you smashing that like button. Secondarily, also pretty important, is checking your work. So test one, what I do is I just turn on the water and then go under the sink, checking for any leaks, and these are usually slow leaks or drips coming from all the different connections that we've, that we've uh, either disturbed or added new, like the strainer, like the tailpiece, and then around that P-trap. The nice thing about having that bucket right there is it will start to drip and you'll easily hear that. Second test, I like to fill the sink up to at least halfway, so a large volume of water, twofold. I want to get pressure on the top, so some head pressure, trying to find leaks. And then I also want to see if there's a large flow of water can create any leaks down below. Same thing, you'll go down and just look around for any leaks around these different parts that we disturbed or the new components that we added. Overall, everything looks pretty good. Now you have the information and confidence to tackle this project at your own house. If something doesn't make sense or your instance is a little different, jump down in the comments and let me know. I'm in there on a daily basis and happy to help out. 
And then before taking off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have weekly videos coming out to help you with your everyday home repairs. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.